What's up Manga fans and welcome back to another review of Bleach this week's chapter 644 Baby Hold Your Hand 7 Never End In My Dream So I have to admit this chapter surprised me because I w was originally under the impression that Peninda was going to rise again The right hand of God would not be put down um, But surprisingly Peninda is done The clones and himself fall to the ground in pieces Completely exploded And I was like, wow, okay, so he's really gone, like, science, like, triumphed um, over a deity, so, um, I'm kind of glad because the fight was reaching its point of, you know, becoming very drawn out, it was kind of drawn out as it was, but I've been enjoying it, but I feel like we've already had Nemu sacrificing herself, and gratefully not in vain, despite, you know, losing her, and Mayuri was pretty much pulling out the stop, so I f feel like this was justifiable, this fight did you know ends quite well i guess but it was just shocking because peninda was just coming back so many times i just thought yeah he's definitely gonna come back again and then mayuri barely puts him down but no he's not coming back but despite this victory it doesn't come without obviously the loss of nemu and the fact that mayuri actually still got damaged like by peninda um like i'm guessing that was like peninda's final kind of assault he managed to get some nerves on um, mayuri's legs because when he turned to walk away he collapsed and his legs were all crumpled and like kind of bent the other way so he was obviously you know thinking wow you still got one on in on me and Ikaku and Yumichika actually arrived and he was um not actually that surprised because you know he always mocks the 11th um, division as being so unkept or un so um what's the word I'd say in unproper in terms of how they're too stubborn to just go but he was grateful that they didn't interfere so um, in the fight and he was like I, f I thank you for not getting involved um, but this is where things kind of get interesting remember the two characters Hitsugaya and Rongiku well Kubo remembers to put them back in the story I actually thought he was not going to bring them back they were just there but no he reveals that they actually were there Mayuri had Nemu bring them along and they're in these capsules and he basically had managed to de-zombify them again so they're basically restored to health so over um yeah literally they're released from their capsule and hits a guy actually um thanks Mayuri which um surprises him because he he's um when he's helped into his capsule pod and he also says you might as well put Zoro, um, Kenpachi in there as well Ikaku and Yumichika are happy because you know Kenpachi was saved and now he's um, fine and they're like we'll be back for you captain and they actually turn to uh, Mayuri and fake him as well so he's like my my is like I'm getting all these thanks today it's such a you know weird and kind of sickening feeling but I'm guessing he's deep down he's somewhat I'd say grateful but at this point all he seems to care about is the fact that Nemu was his perfect creation he managed to make something that evolved on its own and he feels like he's finally stepped out of Urahara's shadow and finally beaten him and he's thinking about oh I can't wait to see your face and mock you and then as he falls to sleep he's got the brain kind of like on his chest as the capsule closes and um, a kind of image of a naked nude Nemu appears in front of him so I'm guessing he really did love his daughter quite a bit that image was a bit weird for me you know as a parental kind of daughter kind of thing but I, I'm guessing it's just him admiring his perfect creation so he basically yeah he drifts off to sleep now this part was weird because I was like is he actually sleeping or has he died because Ura, Urahara where he's with um, Koryaku's group um, notices the changes Ryatsu but the change seemed more like shock like his Ryatsu just disappeared or just like you know stopped so I'm I'm guessing maybe he's just falling asleep like he's actually just flattered out and he's re you know resting now and they've assumed the worst and he's actually not dead or maybe he has actually died because he seemed content he was all mocking and the way he was lamenting about finally passing Urahara Nemu's gone and he's kind of resting in like what looks like a coffin like the ca capsule he's in seemed like he was like you know being buried like he's died and he goes to sleep and imagines Nemu all of that seemed like death to me but Maybe I'm just overthinking it and he's really gone to sleep, but either way at this point, you know, it's back to Koryaki's group and they said they've got more pressing concerns anyway to be worrying about like 
the Riazzi that's been, I think they said it was shifting away from them, vibrating, it's just like kind of dwindling around them, so it's really throwing them off. Um, but the casualties are brought up and Urahara was asking about if all the lieutenants have been taken out, because obviously we saw um, Shuhei got shot down very early, um, I can't remember what chapter it was, but it was very early in their you know, invasion um, of the Soul King Palace that he was shot off by um, um, Barrow. So obviously he's checking to see if everyone else is fine. And Renji says that Rukia himself, Momo are all right. Um, Kuriaku says Nano's all right. So basically they're fine at this point. But um, Barrow basically, Lily or however you pronounce his name, he's kind of um, basically mockingly going on one of his hunting kind of um, I'd say philosophies again it's like oh it must be scary to see comrades being shot down one at a time it's like and not knowing where the enemy is located so he's thinking there they've stopped they don't know what to do they're kind of scared and they don't want to move because you know Barrow is sniping him off one by one and they have no idea where he is and obviously the reaction around him is kind of thrown off their senses so he's just sitting there comfortably waiting for them to make their move but shockingly to both him and obviously everyone else's um, surprise Koryaki just says well we got to make a move and he just, he just basically charges off and he shouted that for not moving and then he gets shot in the chest um, and Lily's like oh it's, um, I expected better of you but then we hear Koryaku chanting and I think it was similar to the colour game he did against Stark and then the next thing he he's actually behind um, Barrow and he swipes at him and um, cuts off um, he's um the barrel of his rifle and um basically next he says i'm gonna take your life next i've taken your weapon you're next so yeah i'm happy about this we're actually going to see some kuriaku action um for the first time in a while and we're gonna see you know the new head captain in action so i'm definitely looking forward to this because if we remember um hashwald himself took an interest in fighting with kuriaku and i'm guessing that will probably be Koryaku's next fight it might even be the, the last fight for him in the series like as a major fight so either way I'm just looking forward to see him fight now and I'm just glad we've moved from Mayuri's fight to this back to the Shinigami hopefully we'll see them fight as well but there's one thing I'd like to know Kuri, um, Koryaku tends to part like having fights with people with guns and I'm wondering is Kupo purposely doing this because he thought was Stark who used guns Robert Akutron the guy with the glasses and the gun who took Koryaku's eye he had a gun and now Lily Barrow has a gun so I'm, I'm thinking this might be a coincidence or maybe Kubo's deliberately doing it but it is kind of there um, that whole fighting people with firearms pattern so maybe he's deliberately doing it but as I said I'm looking forward to see Koryaku fighting the rest of the Shinigami now that Mayuri's fight is done and then obviously hopefully Ichigo's group we get to see what they're um, doing with because Remember Grimjaw's down, down for the count after he got hit with that bull, so we have to see that as well. And there's just other things we need to see, like where is Yachiru? We still don't know where she is, and there's other, like obviously characters like Hitsugaya and um, Rangiko are back, so hopefully we'll see her, and, and um, maybe I'd say Komumaru, like see what he's doing, because he, last time we checked he was with his lieutenant um, searching the area or something, I can't remember. But as I said, yeah, Bleach is, you know, kind of going back on track in terms of we finished with that fight, so now we can move to, I'd say, more of the um, main fights at the moment. So, yeah, as I said, it was a good chapter. It finished off um, Mayuri's fight quite well. Now we're going to start to a new one, so wrapping up and starting the next fight. So, yeah, um, I enjoyed this. So, you guys know the usual. If you enjoyed this chapter, let me know what you think, and I'll speak to you guys next time. Take care.